Live from Waterford and Ungarvan, this is Waterford at One News. It's one o'clock. I'm Sinead Ahern. Good afternoon. Today's top stories, preliminary post-mortem results in the body of Nora Quarren are due, due shortly. Waterford families are turning to private companies as the waiting list for home care support increases. Homeowners in Waterford are being encouraged to rent a room to students for the academic year. And in sport, Liverpool and Chelsea can test the UEFA Super Cup final in Istanbul tonight. <laughs> It's expected to be revealed shortly how Nora Quarren died when preliminary post-mortem results are announced. The body of the 15-year-old was found yesterday two kilometres from the resort where she was staying with her family. She'd been missing for 10 days. Kim Buckley reports. In a statement this morning, the Quarren family said that their hearts were broken. They thanked all of those involved in the search and said that the cruelty of Nora being taken away is unbearable. The family's lawyer, Sankara Nera, says her parents are distraught. Of course, it's highly a very highly traumatic situation. Uh, it's the loss of a daughter and child and uh, naturally it is uh, unfortunate. Nora's naked body was found yesterday just two kilometres from the Du San Resort where she went missing. The discovery was made in a ravine near a waterfall Nora had said she was excited to visit. A post-mortem was carried out this morning and the initial results are expected to be announced shortly. Journalist at the scene, Samisha Naidu, says there are many questions that need to be answered. There is that question that if you had covered that area, why wasn't it? Why wasn't the body found before or was the body not actually there previously? Was it left there more recently? And these are things that hopefully we will get some answer on with the results of the post-mortem. At least at the very least, we should know when exactly Nora died. Police in Malaysia say the post-mortem results will determine the course of the investigation and whether a criminal investigation needs to be launched. The director of a private home care service based in Waterford says families are turning to them as waiting lists increase. More than 7,000 people across the country are waiting for home health packages. Danette Connolly is director of care at Home Instead Senior Care. We have people maybe that are already getting care and maybe the situation has got more complex and they're not able to get an increased package. So some of those people are maybe adding in a bit of private care. We also have people that can't get packages. They're on the waiting list. So as a short-term measure, they might, you know, family help out and maybe for certain things. Maybe it's just the personal care part. You know, they don't want to shower mum or dad, that we can do that part for them. We do a lot of work usually on behalf of the HSC, but we know and we see there are no packages really being given out at the minute. She says there was a hope that funding would be made available. It has started to increase in the last couple of weeks. I think the initial reaction was, you know, everyone was in hope it was going to change quite quickly. But the reality is there's no sign of any immediate you know, change in money being made available to the local HSC to increase the packages. Danette Connolly has this advice for families. Look and see what things are available out there, such as maybe carer's leave might be an option. People might be able to extend and get carer's leave. They might be able to get the carer's allowance. For people that have got people in hospital, really good planning before getting somebody home is really important. Getting the house, maybe it's not the older person's house, maybe it's a family member's house is the best place to take them home. And then as a family, work out who can do what. What is everyone's strengths and weaknesses? And, you know, simple as a timetable, divvy up the responsibilities. A Fianna Fáil councillor wants to see Waterford City become a social shopping hub as part of the new retail strategy. The council called for ideas on how to improve Waterford as a retail go-to destination in its review of the new city and county development plan. Eddie Mulligan carried out a survey on social media to find out what consumers want from their city and the biggest ask was delivering big brand names to Waterford. He says shopping is changing and Waterford needs to keep up. For you come on, you try on, you might order and shop and be home before you get home to Thing. And that's what social shopping is. People want to be able to come in, stroll around, try the iPhone in the shop, maybe buy it online there and have it delivered home. I see Debenhams, for instance. Debenhams, click and collect. You go into Debenhams tomorrow and they're not holding as much stock, but certainly the staff there are asking to try on something. And yes, they will give you what you're looking for online and be delivered to you. Lifestyle sports in the middle of John Roberts Square, they've changed their model to that. And evolving our city, making it become a smart city. 
A lecturer at Waterford IT says social media use is more harmful to girls' mental health than to boys. That's according to a new report published in the Lancet Journal. In girls, the research found that frequent social media use seemed to harm health when it led to either cyberbullying or inadequate sleep and exercise. But these factors didn't seem to have the same effect on boys. Lecturer in developmental psychology at Waterford Institute of Technology, Dr Catherine Cagney, says the findings aren't surprising. It does seem that there is a good lot research saying that girls are more affected by social media than boys so this is not the first time we've heard this we've heard before that perhaps anxiety and depression can be triggered by social media in girls although there is some research that says that no this is not fully the case but there's this growing sense that it has a higher impact Homeowners in Waterford are being encouraged to rent a room to students for the academic year. People can earn up to €14,000 tax-free a year when they rent out a room in their own home. Waterford Institute of Technology has launched a new website, witstudentpad.ie, where homeowners and landlords can advertise their properties. Derek Delaney is the accommodation manager at WIT. We've definitely um, experienced an increased demand for student accommodation in Waterford. We're probably no different than anywhere else in the country in that sense. But what we're trying to do here with WIT is, um, is try to be proactive about that. We've um, just recently launched what we call the WIT Student Pad website, which is a website that helps connect people who want to rent rooms to WIT students as well as landlords wishing to advertise directly to students. So basically what we're lo- looking maybe mo- mostly for is landlords and homeowners who want to advertise lodgings or digs, which, be- which has become very popular again. Guardi have been praised for their work in foiling an attempted ATM robbery in County Cavan overnight. The incident took place between 2 and 3 a.m. this morning on the main street in Virginia. Local Guardi and members of national units intervened and two men were arrested. They're being held for questioning. These people praised Guardi for their work last night. Tip off or no tip off. The guards in Virginia, they weren't sleeping last night. And it's actually great for County Cavan and for any other County in Ireland. Well, I'm delighted that the guard stopped it in time and there was no damage done to the town. But we should have a full time guard station in this town, particularly since Virginia is one of the busiest towns in Cavan. A new positive mental health programme starts in Waterford next month. The six-week course is run by Charity Aware and is open to anyone wishing to learn new ways of dealing with life's ups and downs. It starts at Tracy's Hotel in Waterford City on Tuesday, September 10th at half seven. Brido Mara is Aware's Director of Services. It's a six-week programme based on the principles of CBT, which is Cognitive Behaviour Therapy. It's the connection between your thoughts, your feelings and your actions. We're all very aware of how sometimes our thoughts can be unhelpful and how unhelpful thoughts impact how we feel and then what we do and how that can very quickly turn into a vicious circle. And the whole idea of the Life Skills Programme is that we're teaching people skills in how to manage that process. In other words, how to recognise when a thought is unhelpful and take an action that will change that. WLR Sport. Starting with soccer, where Liverpool can return to the scene of their 2005 Champions League victory this evening when they faced Chelsea in the European Super Cup in Istanbul. Rafa Benitez's side famously came back from 3-0 down to beat AC Milan on penalties 14 years ago. Manager Jurgen Klopp wants the current side to write another chapter in the club's history in the Turkish capital. I know about uh, the special importance and, 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 and how, how what a special place um, Istanbul is for, for every Liverpool supporter. Of course, 2005 is not Nobody will forget that. But we are different people and um, I hope we can make it a special place for ourselves. Kickoff is at eight. Staying with soccer and Waterford FC have been given a home draw in the third round of the Tunnock's Caramel Wafer Cup. They'll play host to Hearts Colts at the RSC on the weekend of the 7th or 8th of September. The competition features 32 teams from Ireland, Scotland, Wales, England and Northern Ireland. It was previously known as the Iron Brew Cup. A Waterford athlete has been awarded a four-year scholarship in the United States. 19-year-old Orla O'Connor will leave for Providence College in Rhode Island tomorrow. She's a member of Waterford AC and Des Colbert from the club says it's a great honour. It's a great honour for Waterford Athletic Club. We're, uh, we're very proud of Orla and her achievements so far. I think this is only so far, it's only the start of her career, hopefully, and she's going to a great college in Providence, Rhode Island, and great head coach over there, Ray Tracy.
In Gala Games, Kilkenny legend Jackie Tyrrell thinks Adrian Mullen can be a game changer in Sunday's All Ireland hurling final against Tipperary. The Ballyhale Shamrocks forward, who's been tipped to win the Young Hurler of the Year award, has started every game in the Championship for the Cats in his debut season at senior level. Nine time All Ireland winner Tyrrell thinks the 20 year old can cause plenty of problems for the Tipperary defence. He's an assassin, this guy. He go for the juggler. I know he's still in his first year but he's brought a level of maturity to his game um, and I, I, I feel he could potentially be the difference uh, with, with along, along the likes the, the, the Connor Browns and these guys of this world Connor Foley's having a super year yeah. as well um, and if, if Tipperary don't get those matchups right at the back um, I just think there's a few questions there. While in racing, preparations are well underway for the August Tremor Festival, which kicks off tomorrow with the first race at 5.15, Saturday's style evening, while Sunday will be a family fun afternoon. There'll also be multiple screens to watch the All-Ireland hurling final between Kilkenny and Tipperary. Tremor Racecourse Manager, Owen Byrne. Uh, we're 5.15 Thursday. Uh, we're calling that our opening meet this year, I suppose. Uh, what we're trying to do is uh, look after owners. So all owners with a valid AIR card, that's their entry card, our system, can come racing for free that night. Um, so it's just uh, open to the racing industry, I suppose, to come down and see what we're doing down here. And uh, they're very welcome. We have uh, Supreme Racing Club actually having a night here with us on the Thursday night. And they're very kindly, along with Willie Mullins, bringing Kenboy to parade on Thursday night. So um, that's uh, happening Thursday night, yeah. And that's the latest on WLR. Our next bulletin is at...